Are you listening? Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Another episode of Trash Talk with me as always is TJ O'Connor. Tonight we have the Herbert Rogers Williams getting ready for a fight going down this Saturday, March 7th at for Driller Promotions at the A-Town Throwdown 16 or 17. 16. One of those one of those numbers. Uh, Trash Talk is brought to you again by Valhalla Combat Sports Incorporated, Ink Shrinks Tattoo out of New Brighton, Minnesota, Spartan Martial Arts, Origin Wellness CBD, James Clark Sports Psychology and Hypnosis Therapy, The Fighters, and TJ's Mom. How are you doing tonight, Herbert? Man, I'm doing blessed. Yeah, dude, that that's great to hear, man. I'm I feel pretty blessed to get, with the fact that I get to see you fight again. In case, <laughs> <laughs> one of one of the things that I was uh, that I'm very intrigued about uh, you, or, or one of the things that makes me uh, very excited to see your fights is the energy you bring to the cage. Where does that energy come from? Is that I I don't know, dude. You just for whatever whatever it is, I can't really explain it, but like. Your aura, your aura radiates inside the cage, and you have so much energy, always challenging your opponent. I don't know, ability to escape deep submissions, and then get, dude, I, there's so much I could say. I'm just like, wh where does that come from? I come in. <laughs> when it's something you want, and you know, it's something you love to do, you're going to have sort all sorts of energy for it, man. And, like I mean, like I've been saying, I've been wanting to do this ever since a kid. No matter what, I love I love the sport. Like I could be in a deep submission. Like I don't I don't panic. Like I I just take my time and I just remember like, hey, this is what I signed up for. <laughs> you know, it's part of it. So <laughs> next Man. Thing, I gotta dig in. It's just crazy. Sometimes I don't be knowing where some mushroom come from, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh man yes, believing in myself is, is the key to it like just keep believing in myself no matter what no matter what anybody say about me or my doubters or who could think they could beat me or whatever when you just hold that belief bro and don't let nobody take it from you you're gonna be a bad man <laughs> oh man I, I love it <clears throat> your passion for fighting really does come across like Damien said, the energy you bring and just the smile. I mean, one of my favorite fights of 2019 was the war between you and Montatua Lemaire last year. And just the whole time, the <laughs> smile on your face as you guys are just trading thunderous <laughs> punches. Just loving every moment of that. The Driller fans, like myself, have to be excited to see you back in the cage. Um, when did you get the call regarding this fight? And what do you know about your opponent coming into the fight? Well... Uh, my coach, it was like a month ago, I believe. A month ago when I had got the, the call about it. And I was like, knowing me, I'm not scared to say no to anybody. You want to step up to the plate and fight? Let's fight. You know, that's what I love to do. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, but what I know about him, I know he's a striker, but that's really about it from what I've seen. I think that he's good with his hands. I like to use my hands as well, you know. <laughs> so let's see who, who get hit first. <laughs> yeah. Well, there, if you can take what I got, so bad. We gonna keep it pushing. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh man. Well, one of the things that I that I liked about you too is that I mean, you you don't shy away from any challenge. You mentioned that already, but uh, you faced uh, high level grapplers, high level submission experts. I mean, uh, strikers. All uh, well-rounded guys as well, you know. I mean, dude, with only four fights to your record, you fought in every type of fighter that there is already, and <laughs> and and that, that's one of the things that that I that I really admire about you, especially going further in your career. But uh, knowing that your opponent is more of a stand-up fighter, is that one of the things that got you a little bit more excited about this fight and wanting to accept it? I mean, I'm just excited to fight. Yeah. <laughs> I love I'm it. it real. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like it feel like I finally get let back out the cage. You know, I get to get back to do what I love. You know, yeah. 
if he knew if he was a good striker or a good submission or whatever, I'm just I love this game. This is what I feel like I am created to do. You know, I like putting myself in big challenges. Why? Because I test myself to see if this is what I want and if I could actually do it, you know. So I just hope he brings his A game. Like I always say, I'm not no big talker. You know, I, I really I never was, but yeah. like, it ain't <laughs> I like. I just like the fight. <laughs> you oh know? man! Oh yeah, and we can totally tell. <laughs> Thousand shit. percent. We 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 can totally tell. I mean, it, it's amazing every time you step inside the cage. And uh, TJ mentioned it earlier about the fight that you had with Manitua. You, you're only facing the toughest guys. One of the things that I've always been kind of impressed with was the guys that can carry their power into the later rounds with them. And it's it's really hard to do. It's either one of those things that you either have it. Or you have to train super hard to get it. What has training camp been like? Because uh, I would say, and I hope this doesn't sound insulting, but your third round was probably your best round in that fight. And, yeah. man, you were so close to getting the finish in that fight, too. Where does the power come from? Uh, I mean, dude, I guess what is what has training camp been like for uh, these fights and stuff, knowing that you you have the skill behind you, man? I mean... <laughs> it's there. What what has camp been like and stuff like that for you? Like going to Saturday practice, shark base, man, to be be an ass kick. <laughs> yeah. <Man. laughs> I, I feel like nothing compared to a Saturday practice. Yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> being in a cage, you get a chance to breathe after like three minutes, bro. But it. A 15-round shark bait, bro, ain't no joke when you got to go against the big dudes. Man, you got to – yeah, but you tell yourself mentally. It's the mental part, like, I tell myself, even if I'm losing, winning, I'm not finna give because anything can happen. Anything yep. can happen, you know. I shoot, I'm still here. I didn't fall yet, so why should I give? Why should Man. I let you have an easy win? <laughs> you know, you ain't knock me out, so what you think this is? You know, I respect Manitoba Lamar. Like, he a cool dude. Yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. Like, like, we had chopped it up and stuff and, you know, got to know each other a little more. We follow each other on Facebook as well. Um, But, like, in them last rounds, it's like, okay, if he ain't drop, I still got to keep pushing, you know. Yeah. I still got to keep driving. Just like, because his motto is to drive through me. So, you know. It is what it is. You drop me, you drop me. But I'm gonna tell you this: <laughs> yeah, I'm not going out like that, you know. <laughs> well, this, this part isn't a question. I know TJ has a question, but one of the things that I just this is one of the things that I just admire about any fighter that has this ability because it's it's pretty rare. But knowing that you're down two rounds, you know, going into that last round. A lot of guys just take it as like, okay, I'm gonna survive. I'm not gonna. I'm. I'm not gonna get finished this fight. I'm gonna uh, lose the decision and uh, and not be embarrassed by tonight. But it doesn't. It didn't seem like that was on your mind at all. You seem. You were like, okay, I'm down two rounds. I'm about to go get this finished. I'm about to become the winner tonight. And I. I, I just love that type of shit. Like I just like not. I would have had. Let my hands go more. I would have had it. <laughs> you know. But hey, it is what it is. You learn, you you learn from your mistakes. Why? Because that's what makes you better. I'd rather get see a mistake now than later on. You know, I kept walking over it and then blocking it. You know, because I went against another dude who is also a good grappler. You know, a wrestler. Mm-hmm. And my last fight, shoot, me me being in the gym working with Coach Ben, Coach Jake, and uh, like defending them takedowns, making it like like I said, I'm a striker. I like to strike. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna do anything in my power to keep you where I want you. You know? So that's what I did. I was working on defending a lot of takedowns and then I defended him and kept it where it was where he was uncomfortable at. But I, I think I thank God for my, my loss though, because it, it taught me a lot. You yeah. know, it taught me a lot. So I was actually kind of, even though I lost, I was kind of happy because I'd rather catch that mistake now than later on in my career. Yeah. Yeah, I love the fact that you said that. And sorry, TJ, you can ask your question now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, exactly. Just 
and that's what the amateurs are for for fighting the best fighters you can and i feel like i'm a broken record but i mean you mentioned the work you're getting in the room and i've never been there but i get nervous when i hear about saturday morning practices talking to you guys from pura vida i mean you guys talk about these saturday morning practices and the work that goes in obviously the guys you're working with i mean you're ranked number three at 185 pounds obviously your teammate nick klein highly ranked as well did that play a factor in your decision to go down to 170 or is this something you've been planning all along all right i mean <laughs> shoot it it was a part of the plan when i had talked about it you know i always wanted to be a heavyweight type of dude because yeah. i'm a big dude <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, I I totally understand wanting to be a heavyweight. Sorry, I didn't. I I I hope I wasn't talking over you. Oh no, you good, you good, you good. Like, yeah. uh, I mean, it's true. Sometimes you gotta make certain commitments when you want to go certain places. You know, I yeah. said, shit, why not try the one seventy? I wanted to see if I could actually do it. And I can. I, I was shocked, you know. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and, uh, before I even reached 185, I was like, when I first stepped in gym, I was like 215. And then yeah. I, I dropped from big dude yeah. to a wheelchair. Yeah. Way. So That's great. You're still I, a big dude. <laughs> I actually kind of like it. Oh, yeah. Well, I was, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm like, I'm saying, like, I still see you as a big dude. Like, my small yeah. ass. Time I stand next to you, I'm like, fuck, dude. Like, <laughs> start lifting, start pinch. No, but but you said something that touched with me earlier too. Uh, was seeing yourself as like a heavyweight too, because uh, I guess when I was growing up, Mike Tyson was the king. Everybody's talking about him. My family's always talking about Muhammad Ali and stuff like that. And I'm like, I wanted to be heavyweight champion of the world, and then I never <laughs> got above 165 pounds, so that didn't happen. <laughs> but, uh, but, but with, with down to, to 170 was that one of the things that you as you started training and as you started fighting and everything like the weight started to come off and it just started to make sense or is this something that you i not uh i, I guess, yeah i guess that's the way the best way to put it uh is, is this something that just kind of started happening you losing weight in the in the gym as you're getting ready for fights and then realizing hey, 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 <coughs> excuse me sorry no but you're fine that's how i went as i was working in the gym like, it, I start cutting weight, you know, even harder. You know, like I said, them Saturday practice, man, not even just a Saturday <laughs> practice, practice in general. It, like, it'd be a kick-ass. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. Like, but them Saturday practice, man, ain't no joke. Like you said, <laughs> <laughs> they practice is not no joke. But I still go in there with a sharp mind, you know, because it's going to make me stronger. The more I tell myself that I don't give up, you know, <laughs> it's going to keep me pushing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, I, I guess speaking more to the fight uh, that's going down this Saturday, uh, what can the fans expect from you? Because I feel like I already know what to expect, man. I'm, I'm excited for you anytime you fight for a reason. But what, what can the fans expect? <laughs> what do you have to say to them? Like them being, <laughs> just know, I'm not going to make no promises, but I will tell you this. I'm going to go in there and give them give them all and give a show like I'm like I'm near to do you know keep my mind sharp oh eyes open and always listening to my coach yeah that's, that's always always <laughs> you know if, if something beautiful happen you know I'm gonna get on it <laughs> yeah you know I, you know you know I'm gonna get on it um, yeah killer instinct like a motherfucker dude <laughs> <laughs> Like, I mean, you see the in this game, it's either you kill or get killed. Nope. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell it's yeah. It's either you kill or get killed. <laughs> Man. I'm sorry, TJ. No, I was going to say, I love it. That finisher mentality. I mean, we every who doesn't love finishes? That's the reason why we watch fights. I mean, obviously, you can't finish them all when you go into a tough guy. But as long as you're trying, I'm liking it. So, I mean, I, I'm more than excited for this fight. Uh, just before we do wrap this one up, Herb, want to give you an open platform just to thank any teammates, sponsors, anybody outside of the gym that's been there for you leading up to this fight. Um, open platform. Most definitely. Right now, at the moment, I don't have any sponsors, but I Dang, definitely would like to um, 
<laughs> definitely like to give a big thanks out to, you know, my coaches, you know, definitely as well for being there, you know, checking on me on, on some tight ends as well. Uh, you know, first off, I should have said God, you know, for yeah. giving me the opportunity. <laughs> Also, I would like to thank you guys as well, you know, just for having me here, you know, because, you know, y'all y'all didn't have to take out of your time as well to, uh, to do this. I but, definitely did. I, I had yeah, you. I 100%. needed percent. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. I have much love and respect. Um, you know, it's, I would like to thank, you know, my family and friends, you know, who's standing with me on this as well. Other than that, that's pretty much it, you know. Oh, yeah. Man, dude, I'm I'm glad that you got the family, the coaches, and the team to support you. Zach Ottawa, uh, Jay Clip, Solo, crap, I Costa, Costa. There we go, Coach dude, yeah. Ben, Zach Otta, You know, yeah, dude, you guys have some great coaches over there. You definitely work with some great guys, awesome. and I think they're doing the right thing with you, man. Like, man, fucking a, dude, just keep up the good work, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I yeah. Yeah, fans of the show, for the fans watching, get there March 7th. It's a small venue. It's intimate. It's, it's one of my favorite places to watch fights. So buy your tickets, nitrotickets.com, select your fighter. Be sure to like and subscribe to this video, Trash Talk with Damien and TJ, and don't be a hoe. <laughs> Have a blessed day, y'all fellas. Be safe. Yeah. Oh.